root locus plot determination of the stability of a system root locus the stability of a given closed loop system depends upon the location of the roots of the characteristic equation which is the location of the closed loop poles if we change some parameter of a system then the location of the closed loop poles in the s plane also changes this movement or the traversal of the poles in s plane is called as root locus root locus is a simple graphical method for determining the roots of a characteristic equation which was invented by w r evans in 1948 it can be drawn by varying the parameter usually the gain of the system is varied from 0 to infinity let us learn the root locus method by solving a problem as given below the question is a feedback control system has an open loop transfer function which is ghhs is equal to k by s into s plus 3 into s square plus 2s plus 2 find the root locus of the system as k varies from 0 to infinity here ghhs is equal to k by s into s plus 3 into s square plus 2 s plus 2 from the numerator there is no s term present you can see there is only the k the gain of the system is given so number of zeros is equal to 0 from the denominator part equating it to 0 we get s into s plus 3 into s square plus 2 s plus 2 is equal to 0 so from here we get the poles those are 0 from the s minus 3 from s plus 3 term and minus 1 plus minus j from the quadratic equation you can solve it easily so number of poles total number of poles is 4 we will find the centroid the formula of finding the centroid is sum of real parts of the pole minus sum of real parts of the zeros divided by p minus z here real parts of the poles are from the previously we see that 0 minus 3 minus 1 plus minus j so 0 minus 3 Minus one for this, minus one plus j, and minus one for minus one minus j. So there is no zero, so minus zero divided by p minus j. Total number of poles was four minus total number of zeros was zero, so which is given is minus five by four, which is equal to minus one point two five. So our centroid lies in the real axis at the point minus one point two five. Now we will find the angle of asymptote. which is theta is given by 2q plus 1 by p minus j into pi where q is equal to 0 1 dot 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 p minus z minus 1 p minus z minus 1 we have p minus z is equal to 4 so p minus z minus 1 is equal to 3 so in our case q is equal to 0 1 2 and 3 now we have theta equal to 2q plus 1 by p minus z into pi and q is equal to 0 1 2 and 3 putting q is equal to 0 in this relation we get theta is equal to 1/4 of pi which is equal to 45 degree putting q is equal to 1 in this relation we get theta is equal to 3/4 of pi which is equal to 135 degree putting q is equal to 2 in this relation we get 5/4 of pi which is 225 degree which is also is equal to minus 135 degree and putting q is equal to 3 we get 7/4 of pi which is equal to 315 degree which is also is equal to minus 45 degree now in the s plane this is the real axis or the sigma axis and this is the imaginary axis or the j omega axis our poles are at 0 minus 3 minus 1 plus j and minus 1 minus j now if we take any point between this minus 3 and 0 these two poles the total number of poles plus zeros at that right side of that test point will be odd let us take this point minus 2 then at the right side of the point there is only one poles so there is no zeros so total number of poles plus zero is equal to 1 we will consider only on the real axis so we will do not incur this two poles so at the right side of this point there is odd number of poles plus zeros and if we take any point in between these two points so the total number of poles plus zeros will be odd so in this region our root locus lies we will darken it and previously we have found 
that the centroid is present at minus 1.25 so from the centroid we will draw the angle of asymptote first one at 45 degree angle second one at 135 degree angle we do not need to draw the third and fourth one because these counter angles are also making the same angle this is minus 135 degree and this angle is minus 45 degree now we will find break away or breaking point from the characteristic equation of the transfer function which was given to us we get this I am supposing that you know how to find characteristic equation now or uh, s to the power 4 plus 5 sq plus 8 a square plus 6 s plus q is equal to 0 so k will be minus of that part so dk ds is equal to minus of 4 s cube plus 15 s square plus 16 s plus 6 so we will equate dk ds is equal to 0 or the term is equal to 0 from this polynomial is equal to 0 now this equal to 0 is a cubic equation it is not a quadratic equation we cannot solve it by vanishing method uh, or any other known method we will use numerical method here let fs is equal to this term so 4 s cube plus 15 s square plus 16 s plus 6 now we will put random values as s and we will get our desired point we have f is equal to 4 s cube plus 15 s square plus 16 s plus 6 we will put at first s is equal to minus 1 you can put any value for convenience i am taking minus 1 so for putting minus 1 we get 4 and minus 1 cube plus 15 minus 1 square plus 16 minus 1 plus 6 which gives us 1 putting similarly s equal to minus 2 we we'll get we we'll get 2 putting s equal to minus 3 we get minus 15 now you can see that for s equal to minus 2 we get 2 and for s equal to minus 3 we get minus 15 so the curve cuts somewhere the real axis between minus 2 and minus 3 to get from 2 to minus 15 so the root we are finding we are trying to find must lie between minus 2 and minus 3 which is our required breakaway point here was our previously and we will take any heart mean between this minus 2 and minus 3 or breakaway point let's take it here intersection point similarly from the cash statistic equation we will now get s to the power 4 plus 5x cube plus 8s square plus 6s plus k is equal to 0 now we will um, create the route here I have created it previously here is the route array and from this line s to the power 1 row we get 6 minus 0 0.73 into k is equal to 0 so k will be 8.2 so critical value of k is 8.2 again from the route array the auxiliary array or the s square row which is this one we get auxiliary equation which is 6.8 into s square plus k 6.8 into s square plus k is equal to 0 we have k the critical value of k is 8.2 we put here so we get s as plus minus 1.090 which is our intersection point on the imaginary axis one at plus 1.90 and another one is minus 1.90 now we will find angle of departure or arrival here we have the poles at here 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 and here we will name it p1 p2 p3 and p4 to find the angle of departure with respect to the point or the pole p2 the formula is theta d with respect to p2 is equal to 180 degree minus sum of all angle of poles minus sum of all angles of zeros how to find it we will simply join these lines p1 to p2 p1 to p3 and p2 to p3 and p2 to p4 we'll find this angle this angle and this angle those are the angle of theta p there is no zero so 
it sum of theta z is equal to 0 now theta p is equal to sum of p1 plus p2 plus p3 from the figure theta p1 will be 180 degree which is the total angle is 180 degree minus of tan inverse 1 tan inverse of height by base this angle will be tan inverse 1 which is gives us 135 degrees so this angle is 135 degree theta p2 we can simply see here this is 90 degree and theta p4 which is this angle is tan inverse half height by base again 26.25 which total gives us 251.56 degree so our angle of departure with respect to the point p2 is 180 degree minus this angle 215.56 is equal to minus 71.56 which is actually nearly minus 72 degree the angle of departure with respect to p3 will be the negative of p2 on the mirror image similarly so you get angle of departure with respect to the point p3 is equal to plus of 71.56 degree now we will draw the root locus which is our final step from the pole zero map we get this the j omega axis the sigma axis the darkened region where our root locus lies the two asymptotes and the poles zero to these two and minus three we get the intersection point from the route array plus 1.09 j here and minus 1.09 here and we also get our breakaway point somewhere between minus 3 and minus 2 i keep it here we have calculated the angle of departure at angle of 72 minus 72 degree from this pole we will draw a reference line parallel to the real axis and draw the angle as from this pole with this is negative x negative angle so we will draw it clockwise and from p2 this angle is anti-clockwise as it is positive plus 72 degree now to draw the root locus we will simply from breakaway point we will start from this breakaway point we will simply draw two lines parabolic lines which are parallel to the asymptote but it will never cut the asymptote and for these two poles we will draw one like this which is also parallel to the asymptote it departs with an angle of minus 72 degree and passes to that intersection point and parallel to the asymptote but never cuts the asymptote similarly like the mirror image of that we will draw similarly here like this so this is our complete root locus one is here the another is this one the third is this and the fourth one is this remember we have found that p minus z is equal to 4 so total number of our asymptote will be 4 where we have find 4 this is our final root locus here i have shown that the similar root locus how to find it from matlab we have the GHS is equal to k by s to the power 4 plus 5 s cube plus 8 s square plus 6 s I have simplified it so we have taken k equal to 1 so declare the numerator n is equal to 1 declare the de denominator array which is the coefficient terms s to the power 4 coefficient is 1 5 8 and 6 respectively and for the s to the power 0 term the coefficient is 0 there is no s to the power 0 terms so i have taken 0 to find the transfer function the g is equal to tf n comma d will give the transfer function to plot the root locus the command is r locus g if we run this program you get this root locus we have drawn it previously you see this point minus 2 minus 4 this point must be minus 3 this is 0 and from those two poles making angle 72 degree these two is 1 2 3 and 4 hello everybody thank you for watching this video i think now you can solve root locus problem like this by yourself please give it a like and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you